viscometer was one of the first rubber testing instruments to describe processing and cure characteristics of rubber compounds and polymers. Mooney tests are still widely used by rubber and polymer manufacturers for quality testing. Whether you're a lab technician, a process engineer, or an R&D scientist, it's important to understand the test. So let's begin. Before you process rubber, you're probably doing one of two things, mixing the rubber in-house or purchasing compound from an outside vendor, such as a custom mixer. Custom mixers may supply one or more of the following tests and a certificate to their customers. Rheometer readings and curves, tensile, hardness, density, and Mooney data. For those mixing in-house, Mooney testing may be performed as a quick quality check, along with other tests as needed. Mooney tests consist of a couple of steps. First, conditioning or preheating for one minute, then the Mooney viscosity test, which lasts four to eight minutes. Optionally, a stress relaxation test can be performed after the Mooney viscosity test to give a snapshot of a material's elasticity. Alternatively, a higher temperature Mooney scorch test can also be performed on Mooney viscometers to determine when a material begins to cure. Today, however, we'll be looking more closely at the Mooney viscosity test and stress relaxation test. If we look at the graph from a Mooney test, we can clearly see the steps of the test and how the compound being tested responds. The line on the graph represents the material's torque response. A torque of 0.83 decanewton meters or 0.75 pound inches is equivalent to one Mooney unit. In the first step, conditioning, the upper platen closes and the sample is preheated for one minute. Since the rotor is not turning at this point, there is no torque response from the material and the line is level at the bottom of the graph. In the second step, Mooney viscosity, the rotor begins to slowly rotate at 2 RPM, imparting strain onto the sample in the test chamber. We see the torque line go up abruptly, then gradually slope down, approaching a plateau. The resulting torque after four to eight minutes of rotation is used to define the material's Mooney viscosity. In the final optional stress relaxation step, the rotor in the instrument is suddenly brought to a stop. As the material in the test chamber relaxes and the viscoelastic forces on the rotor approach equilibrium, the torque response decreases. The remaining torque helps characterize the material's elasticity. So what can be learned from this test? First and most important, we can learn whether a material meets specifications for production. More specifically, we learn about the process viscosity of a material from the Mooney test, or its resistance to flow. A higher viscosity material will impart more torque to the rotor, producing a higher Mooney value. In the stress relaxation test, we measure the material's rate of dissipation of stress for predicting processability, green strength, nerviness, and compliance.